Let's imagine we were asked to integrate a function that was given to us in cylindrical coordinates. So I have a triple integral of some cylindrical function with respect to volume over a solid region B. Okay, so our first job would be to understand the region B, whatever it was in space, and imagine dividing it up into subintervals. Well, our first job should be to think about what a subinterval looks like in cylindrical coordinates. And so we could think about it, right, as if you start at a point R, excuse me, let's imagine that we start at a point R theta Z. Right, so R, something like that, theta, and you go up and there's Z, that, that's the point we start with. And now let's imagine we increment just a little bit to where we're looking at this point, r plus some delta r theta plus some delta theta and z plus some delta z, and see if we can imagine the region we trace out. Well, if we increase r a little bit, it means we just come out here a little bit, right? So that blue line segment would represent delta r. All right, theta, but a little bit more, right? We'd be out there, right? So from, let's see, that angle there would be delta theta, right? I've increased the angle theta just by a little bit. And please forgive, that's a little curvy, right? It should be straight lines going back there to the origin. And then the point Z, right? We rose up Z, if I increase that, we go up there. And so it's like we get this little wedge which I'm having a real hard time drawing. But we end up with what I would call a spherical wedge curved across the top, pointed back towards the origin. Looks something like this. And so DV would come from understanding those volumes. And we can actually dissect what that volume is, what's nice here is there's also another way of understanding it. And so if I look at it, I get that little delta r there. And then I could think about this as an arc length, right? Well, I'm out r, right? And then I swung over a delta theta, delta theta. So I have r times delta theta there. I'm just going to leave that uh, flub up of the English language in here. It amuses me. All right, and then I increased delta Z, and if I treat that like a prism, I would have R times delta R times that delta theta, delta Z. And so what I realize is that if I did this in a Riemann sum and took a limit as n approaches infinity, dV would become dZ R dr d theta. And that's the nicest part, because what I realize now is this is dA from polar coordinates times dz. Well, if I take a little dA, right, an area, and multiply it by height, I get a volume. So before we wrote down a bunch of relationships between rectangular and cylindrical coordinates, what I want to do now is add one. So relationships between rectangular and cylindrical coordinates. And so before we wrote down that x was r cosine theta and that y was r sine theta, if I took the quotient of y and x, I get tangent theta. I like writing that r squared is x squared plus y squared. In the previous video, we talked about that here we're actually considering r to be positive, so we could actually reduce that to a square root. We also know that z is equal to z. And finally, if I was thinking about dv in rectangular coordinates, it would be dz, dy, dx in whatever order we thought was convenient. And in cylindrical coordinates, that's dz, r, dr, d theta. And there again, we might be able to change the order of that to make some integration easier. 
Okay, so that's an introduction to cylindrical coordinates and relationships between rectangular and cylindrical coordinates. In our next, in our next video, we'll actually evaluate a cylindrical coordinate integral.